Let's talk about the next topic in line, which is velocity. Velocity is essentially defined as the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. Now, clearly displacement is a vector quantity we already established in the last video. So, velocity because it's displacement upon time, it has to be a vector quantity. So, velocity is a vector quantity. There are two kinds of velocity that we usually define. The first one is the average velocity and the second is the instantaneous velocity. Average velocity is defined over a course of time or over a large change of time and the formula is total displacement upon total time taken. It's also represented by delta x vector by delta t where delta x vector is a change in displacement, delta t is a change in time. Now instantaneous velocity is defined in the limiting situation when our time interval is extremely small. So the formula for instantaneous velocity is same as average only that the time interval is decreased to an infinitesimally small value. So when I apply limit delta t tending to 0 on this expression, what I'm essentially doing is I'm decreasing this time period to almost 0. In that situation, the object won't have enough time to travel the displacement and clearly the displacement will also decrease to a very, very small value. So this ratio in the limiting situation will transform itself into this ratio which is dx vector by dt. Now over here we have a differential of displacement with respect to time. So I can say that instantaneous velocity is simply dx vector by dt. Both these formulae are very, very important to you and you must remember them. Now another interesting thing that we obtain is that the magnitude of instantaneous velocity is actually equal to instantaneous speed. Now why is this happening? Because if we see that for a very, very small change in displacement or essentially in very small time, a very small displacement will take place. And for that very small displacement, I can say that magnitude of that is equal to distance. Why? Because, because the time is so small, the particle won't get enough time to essentially change directions. So in that situation, displacement's magnitude is exactly equal to distance for that very short period of time. If I divide that time period on both sides, what I'll obtain is on the left hand side, we'll have instantaneous velocity. On the right hand side, we'll have instantaneous speed. So what we see is that instantaneous velocity's magnitude is exactly equal to instantaneous speed. Of course, to compare a vector quantity with a scalar, I have to take the magnitude of vector quantity. So I hope these three concepts are very, very clear to you. Now let's try to solve a problem based on what we just understood. The question says, a cyclist moves 20 meters towards east from the origin O. So here at the lamppost, we take the origin O and he moves 20 meters towards, towards east. He then reverses his direction and moves 10 meters. Total time taken for the entire motion is 20 seconds. Comment on the average speed and average velocity of the cyclist. So like I said, over here, we have the lamppost at origin. First of all, the cyclist travels 20 meters east and then he reverses his direction, travels 10 meters backwards meaning travels 10 meters west. Now finally the cyclist is here clearly right at the end of this entire uh, motion. We have to comment on average speed first of all. So I will first of all calculate total distance and total displacement because in average speed formula I will need total distance and for average velocity I will need total displacement. So total displacement clearly is 10 minus 0. Why? Because displacement is defined as final position minus initial position. The particle started from here, so position vector A is clearly at 0 and position vector B is clearly at plus 10 because from here up to here we have plus 10 uh, positions travelled. So I can say that the displacement is simply PB minus PA vector which is 10 minus 0 which is plus 10. So final position of the particle or the, fine, or the net displacement is towards the plus direction uh, which is 10 units or 10 meters. The total distance travelled is clearly 20 plus 10 because distance is simply the path length. It doesn't care about what direction the object is moving in. So this is 20 plus 10 which comes out to be 30 meters. Now average speed is defined as total distance upon total time. So 30 upon 20 will give me 1.5 meter per second as my average speed. Average velocity is defined as total displacement upon total time which is plus 10 upon 20. The answer comes out to be plus 0.5 meter per second. Remember, if the displacement was in the negative direction, then average velocity would have been negative because velocity is a vector quantity just like displacement. Another interesting thing that has come back again is that because the direction of motion was changed at a point of time, which is over here, the value of distance and displacement are different. 
remember in the in the last video we talked about this that distance is equal to displacement or magnitude of displacement if the direction of motion does not change and distance is always greater than the magnitude of displacement if the direction of motion changes so over here we can see direction of motion changed and displacement is less than distance i hope this clarifies the basic idea about the concept of velocity too. so summarizing what we just learned i can say that velocity is defined as rate of change of displacement with respect to time very very clear in the very start we talked about it then average velocity is simply delta x vector upon delta t where delta x vector is a large change in displacement delta t is a large change in time next we have instantaneous velocity which is the instantaneous change of displacement with respect to time or velocity of any particle at any instant of time this one is defined as uh, the limiting condition when delta t is tending to zero the expression i obtain is dx vector by dt correct over here we have dx vector as a very small change in displacement dt as a very small change in time or in other words we have differential of displacement with respect to time when we have to calculate uh, instantaneous velocity velocity is a vector quantity and it can be either positive or negative just like displacement and magnitude of instantaneous velocity is equal to magnitude of instantaneous speed or instantaneous speed itself i hope this is very very clear to you all these concepts are important and will be coming again and again in the future topic videos thank you